My name is Jen and welcome to my channel, Happy Hapa. If you're new here, I'm an Asian American young professional living in Singapore. I created this channel not only to document my experiences living in Singapore, but also share helpful advice with all of you. During my first year living in Singapore, I've been lucky enough to have a lot of friends and family visit me. Over the course of those visits, I've developed a set of tips and advice that I share with all of my visitors before they come to Singapore so they know exactly what to expect during their trip. In this video, I'm going to share with you some of those helpful tips that you need to know if it's your first time visiting Singapore or if you haven't visited in a few years. So if you've done even a little bit of research before your trip, you've heard about hawker centers. To quickly explain if you're not familiar, hawker centers are basically food courts where there are many different vendors, each selling different types of dishes, most of which are local Singaporean dishes. Hawker centers are known for being very affordable and no frills. So it's a really great way to get an affordable meal in, get a taste of the amazing cuisine that Singapore offers, and have a very Singaporean experience all in one. So I'm going to share a few tips with you on how to best navigate hawker centers. The first is as soon as you arrive, you need to do something that is called choping. Chope is a Singlish word that basically means to reserve your seat. And it's something that all locals do, so it's important to know and understand. So what you do is before you've even placed your order, you would take a small common item like a business card or these packs of tissues are very typical to use, and you would place it on the seat that you want to sit in. It's obviously not the end of the world if you don't do this, but it will save you a lot of time, especially during busy times like lunch and dinner where a lot of the seats are bound to be full. A lot of visitors don't know what choping is and are a little bit confused when they see these little packs of tissues on the tables and even think sometimes that it's for anyone to use. Now you know a little bit more about choping and Singaporean culture. While most restaurants in Singapore will take credit cards, at Hawker Center, cash is still very frequently used. So I always recommend to my guests that they carry a small amount of cash on them, especially if they're planning to visit these hawker centers. Most dishes are going to cost you between five to seven Singaporean dollars. So it's a very affordable meal. If you are planning to have a beer or another alcoholic beverage with dinner, do make sure to carry a bit more cash because alcohol is actually very expensive in Singapore. To give you a sense, a bottle of beer would be somewhere between 10 to 15 Singaporean dollars and a cocktail, especially at a nicer bar is going to be upwards of 30 Singaporean dollars. So this is important to factor into your budget. One last thing about hawker centers is that overall it's a very no frills experience. Most of them are outdoors and they don't have air conditioning. Some will have fans, but it's definitely going to get pretty hot and there's no napkins provided. So if you've taken my tip and started to carry around these little packs of tissues with you, then you don't have a problem because you can just use these as napkins. I know it seems really minor, but as an American, I'm very used to having napkins available everywhere I go and so this was was one of those little surprises that I learned about when first moving to Singapore. So now moving on to public transit. This is definitely one of my favorite parts about living in Singapore. The public transit is absolutely incredible and I highly recommend that you use it as your main way of getting around the city. It's very easy to navigate. You can use an app like Google Maps to put in the destination that you want to go to and it'll show you a few different ways to get there using public transit. You could either take the MRT, which stands for the Mass Rapid Transit System, which is basically the metro or the subway, and then there's also a bus system. I think it's a little bit easier to use the MRT if it's your first time to Singapore because all of the stations have very clearly marked maps and directions on which train you should be getting onto to go to your destination. Buses are a little bit more difficult because not all of the buses will have maps built in or a sense of which way you'll be going. So if using a bus, you definitely need to use an app like Google Maps or something to make sure you're going the right way. When paying for public transit, if you have a credit card that has contactless payment, you can just use that. You don't need to buy a separate card or token to access the MRT. I find this so convenient because there are so many times when I'll go visit a city and use the public transit system just a few times and end up with a card that has some unused value that I'm likely to never use again. In Singapore, you don't need to bother with that at all. You can simply enter into the station, you'll see turnstile 
styles that will direct you where to enter. And what you do is you just take out your credit card and you tap it onto the turnstile and it'll let you through. You don't need to worry about any kind of ticketing situation. And when you exit, you do the exact same thing. You just take out your same credit card and tap it on the turnstile to exit. One important thing to note is that you should not use a card that has foreign exchange fees because each time that you're riding the MRT, you'll then get a foreign exchange fee for those credit card transactions. And that can definitely add up if you're using the MRT a few times a day to get to different parts of the city. So that is something that you should check in advance and make sure that if you do have one, you're using a credit card that doesn't have foreign transaction fees. On public transit, try not to speak loudly or use the phone. This actually used to be a rule when there were COVID restrictions. There were signs posted all over the buses and the metro saying don't talk and don't talk on the phone because it will increase the spread of germs from you know, opening your mouth and speaking. There are no longer those signs posted, but it's kind of one of those unspoken rules and definitely something to just be mindful of to be a polite visitor to Singapore. One last tip about public transit, and this is really important, so make sure you're listening. While a lot of other countries no longer have any requirements related to masking, Singapore still requires you to wear a mask when taking public transit. That includes either the metro or the bus, and you will not be allowed to enter if you don't have a mask on. There are no masks that are provided for you in case you forget one, so I always tell my guests to make sure that they have a spare mask on them just in case they decide that they do want to take the metro or the bus. A lot of my visitors have asked me, do you think I need a SIM card? And I honestly think Singapore is a place where you can get away with not having one. As I mentioned earlier, it's really easy to get around Singapore using the public transit system. You can also download maps offline to help you know where you're getting around. And if you ever get lost, you can just ask someone because the vast majority of Singaporeans speak English. Also, it's pretty easy to find free Wi-Fi to connect to. You can just pop into a cafe or even some public areas have free Wi-Fi available. If you do end up deciding that you'd be more comfortable having cell access while in Singapore, you can visit any 7-Eleven and they sell a range of different types of tourist SIM cards. You can find the option that best suits your needs. So a lot of my visitors will ask me when they're deciding what to pack, what's the weather like, what should I make sure that I bring? The weather is fairly similar year round in Singapore. It'll be between 80 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, between 20 to 30 degrees Celsius roughly, and it's usually pretty humid and hot. I definitely recommend packing lightweight, breathable clothing because if you're going to be exploring and walking around a lot, you're definitely going to be quite sweaty. And so making sure you are wearing clothes that you just feel comfortable in. Also, because Singapore is such a walkable city, I recommend bringing a comfortable pair of walking shoes and avoiding wearing high heels because some of the sidewalks actually are not super even and you could easily um, twist an ankle if you're wearing high heels. Arguably the most important thing that you should pack is an umbrella. The rain is so unpredictable in Singapore. It could start out being a really sunny, beautiful day, and within 15 minutes, it could transform into a horrible thunderstorm that lasts for the rest of the day. I have been caught in too many downpours unprepared, so this is something that I highly recommend all of my guests bring, and that each time I leave the house, I make sure to grab just a small umbrella that I can throw in my bag. Another benefit of the umbrella is that you can also use it when it's sunny to shield yourself from the really strong sun. And many Singaporeans will use their umbrellas for both of these purposes. Those were some of my starter tips and advice that I share with all of my guests who are visiting Singapore. I hope that you found this video helpful in preparing for your trip. Let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this. I also have itineraries that I've developed for my visitors for some of the different neighborhoods around Singapore. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.